Hi, I'm Charlie Gilpin. Um, I train at a Brazilian top team, Happy Valley. And uh, this is where we've been doing all our work, preparing for the World Championships. It's 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 the test to see where, where we stand with, with the people that are, you know, our belt level, our, our age, our rank. I mean, there's a lot of local competition. There's competitions elsewhere. But when it comes down to it, this is where the best of the best is going to. So. This is where we've been and now we're a year since the last Worlds and we're getting ready for Logia Worlds again and this is uh, Worlds number two. We're in, two out, two in, two out, two in, two out, two in, two out. Two in, two out. So we've been building with Army and getting all these kids and tunes trained up is the future of our, of our teams over here as we start bringing these guys up for the juvenile division. So And getting Charlie not just the experience competing, but also the experience coaching and whatnot. I started coaching jiu-jitsu just, just the past year, but I feel like in just this one year I've grown so much seeing a different side of side of things in jiu-jitsu. It was it was it was on my mind that I'll coach eventually, but I was I was just always focused on wanting to learn as much as I can. Um, getting as good as I can and the, the rest would follow. Try to get your knee up. Keep pushing his head that way. Keep pushing his head. Nice. A little more uncomfortable, Romeo? <laughs> yeah? Look, look more uncomfortable. It's scary because these kids are just blue belts, but they're like 10 year blue belts already. You know, so it's like when they train with my adults, it's going to be pretty funny to watch. Like these adults who've been training for three to four years going against these 16 year old kids who have been training for 10 years and whatnot. Um, it's helped me as a person uh, be able to see different angles. Um, my technique's gotten a lot better since I've been able to coach. Charlie has been with us since he's won a white belt. You know, I picked him up when he was a skinny 20, 21 year old white belt. I think he's been with us close to five or six years now, and uh, he's just phenomenal. Uh, to new, new white belts, I'd say just, just have faith. And as long as you're going to the right gym, the people will take care of you. Jiu Jitsu as a whole is a really good community. Before you know it, you're going to know all these moves, you're going to be a much different person than you were before, much more confident. Pretty close to his black belt, you know, I think he's going to do do some damage in the brown belt division this year, uh, growing all around, not just as a competitor, but as a coach, as a person, just awesome kid, man, he deserves the world. Oh. I'm over here, killing him, putting mad pressure on him. You know what, Big D? You come beat these guys up today. <laughs> oh, uh, you always do. This is important. Put your head right here and start sliding his head that way. Slide his head that way. You guys get that part too. Okay? Get ready. Set. Go. So you got to do something. You'll have to do something. So the future is here. You know, it's creeping up. And look how, how big we are now. This is Worlds. It's the, the biggest, biggest no-gi tournament of the year. We get to go out there and see who the best of each weight class is. Best of each weight class and of course the absolute as well. I think my girlfriend Maria has a great shot at winning that in the uh, female side. I'm Maria Rufaro, Maria Rufato in Portuguese. I'm 22. We're getting ready for no-gi words one more time. I'm really excited to prove myself again against the best. I met Charlie in 2019 in New York. That was my first no-gi Pan Ams. And I remember him, I was doing absolute, and he was like outside, like screaming for me, and I mean, help me coaching and, and whatever. And he was, he had his mad face, and he was like, with his mad face, and looking up to him, whoa, this guy looks really mad. <laughs> Tore my, uh, I think it was an LCL, like two days before, like the day before we were supposed to leave for the flight, so I like, trained super hard, got injured right before, sat on the sidelines watching everybody, still went to the trip. Then we met again at Worlds in 2019. And uh, we, got, we got to talking a little bit more there, and then eventually she came over here to train with us, and the rest is history, just been <laughs> grinding ever since. We support each other as we we fighting for the same dream and goals, so I think, I think it's pretty awesome. Yeah, whatever whatever I can't pick up, she picks up for me, and whatever she can't do, I'm on, I'm on the other end. We're always working together, trying to 
kept trying to attack the same goal. So. Um, if we don't have the, de the desire to you know, get up and keep going, we're always there pushing each other. We, we bo we're both on the same path, so we need a lot of the same things. So when one person doesn't have it, the other person does. Yeah, and I'm really, really happy and excited when I see him competing. And it makes me really excited to see him like scrapping. Love, love is good. Love can be the top, but support, like respect, love, support is more than that too so respect a partner support their goals too and work together we really work together with it all it just makes me happy like to be with him and support each other and living this life that's what makes us a great team we've been training a long time for this like weeks on weeks on months on months I'm excited to go see how how all of our hard work is going to pay off So game plan for today, everything. Hitting them with your best takedowns, your best sweeps, your best passes, your finishes, your escapes. Yeah, want to see what you guys are working with. I want they see my Jiu-Jitsu. Of course, I know every time to win, I want to win, but I, I want to show that I have Jiu-Jitsu. But it's really important for you to be able to, to gauge who you're competing against, because that's going to dictate how you start your match. Like as much as you can read from your opponent. I'm, I'm extremely competitive. I'm competitive about everything. I'm competitive about comp Jiu Jitsu. I'm competitive about business. I'm competitive about everything. I'm so proud of our team. So the next drill is uh, let's play with your different interests. Okay, your first 10 seconds, first 20 seconds of the match. I'm excited. Excited. I'm really excited to go compete with, uh, with the best of the best. So I'm nervous as well. I want to show the people that I know what I'm doing too. No stalling or winning by two points and holding all the match. I want the, the audience, people watching, anyone to see uh, when we're out there on the mat, we're giving it our all. getting our car first and then we usually end up killing some time uh, most of the time we like to go do something that just get our minds completely off of jiu-jitsu you know like going to the beach and just hanging out and spending time with friends and laughing and completely forgetting that we're going to war the next day I do have an appointment coming up but basically they'll just check my heart how they found out was my heart rhythm was off you know the portocardium is this little flap that stays over your heart and it when your heart pumps it, it, it moves and whatnot, but when it calcified it, it just stayed hard and then my heart couldn't pump all the way. And then basically the heart rhythm is how they figure out that something was off. They ended up figuring out that my pericardium in my heart was all calcified and basically they had to open me up to remove that. Crazy. Like straight up heart attack. I was about yeah. to have a heart attack in a second. They put me under. They opened me up for six hours, six or seven hours, and as soon as they opened me open, they saw my, cal my calcified pericardium, and they cut that thing out. You gotta have heart surgery. Yeah, maybe it would be pretty quick. Like, all of a sudden, you're like, hey, I'm going to heart surgery in like a week. What? Now my heart is able to fully pump again, but basically for a year and a half, I was training, competing under heart failure without knowing. Dude, I placed a Pan American while I was dying. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I came back the next the year after and I placed at Worlds, the no, Worlds Masters Division, but like everything that's happened the last few years, heart surgery, you know, like our gym flooded, there was fires that like had to shut our gyms down for a while, so a lot of struggles, but um, you know, proud of the team, we were out there, we're just a little team in Oregon, you know, middle of nowhere here, not too, not, well, not California or Texas or New York or Florida, one of the main states, but we're out there competing for years, literally one of the best in the world. Oh, that's crazy. No, bro. That's alive, look at that. 
Oh my god! I give you $10 if you eat one. Warming up for our opponents tomorrow. We are ready. We are ready. We were ready. We've been ready. Tomorrow's just the final, the final push, last big tournament of the year. Yeah, we got the competitive juices flowing, man. I'm sure to have some fun. Or he Honestly. smacked me around with some foosball, <laughs> then I handed it back to him in ping pong. <laughs> Tomorrow we take it out of the opponents. That's it. <laughs>match it was super close match I was doing super well against this Brazilian guy at Taiji from GF team uh, had a really close like wrestling I thought I was winning the wrestling exchanges about a minute and a half left in the in the in the match and I was like I gotta do something where I'm not winning up my feet I can't score he hasn't been able to score I don't want it to go to the referee's decision so I went to pull guard I pulled guard and then he like boom passed my guard right away and I was and then I try to recover, and then basically I just fought hard to try to get my, my, my points back, you know. And I mean, he played the game, he just stalled me out, you know, more power to him. You know, he played it, you know, he did, the, did what he should have done and took me out. He went up, he went on to win the, the whole tournament, you know. Nice job, really good. But uh, I'll be back, that, that's definitely not the last one they've seen of me, and I'm excited for next year. Next year I'm gonna keep, keep this streak going, I'm gonna come out strong. You know, that's the one medals, Master World Gold and Master in Nogi Worlds. Those are the golds I haven't had. I've gotten the silvers, I've got the bronzes, but the gold is the one that's missing in my, in my frames. <laughs> Charlie had a really good run at Worlds, you know. He had a third match that was the medal for the match. If he won that, he would have placed amongst the top four. And he started out really well. There's your two, Charlie. In advantage. Patient now, smart. Nice, Charlie, get that leg. Enter it, enter it, enter it, it's there. Hug the head, hug the head. Stay on top, three, two more, bro. Or up two points and then the dude was able to take his back. Hey, fight for the underhooks there. Underhooks on those butterflies. Nice, bro, hold it. Hold it, Charlie, keep it. Advantage, Charlie. Hey, no points for him there. No hooks, Charlie, no hooks, bro. Let's fight. Back escape as soon as possible. Slide away, slide away, Charlie. He's too high, shake him off. 
Front roll out of it like Igor does. Yes, yes, yes. Roll, Charlie, roll. It was a really good performance for him. I think it was good for him to see that he's like, I belong with these guys. I need to be in here. You know, these guys shouldn't be beating me. And I think that tournament really showed him that he's capable and he's going to be able to do it in the future. So I'm already getting kind of emotional <laughs> talking about these guys. You can kind of see how, uh, how, how invested we are on them. But um, so Maria, I first met her just like about three, three years or so ago and she came to the United States. It was a pretty amazing story. She like super poor, like I don't know, she basically came out of the favelas in Brazil and whatnot uh, and had to buy her ticket to make her way here to come and compete in the Pan Americas. I never had like money support around me and I started selling goodies like candies, like brownies, like I saw a lot in tournaments in the streets too girls out making candy and making cookies and going out on the street and selling them and like like just hustle just determination and whatnot basically the the, the giddy the giddy's money that was helped me a lot to, to come here and then it's not only that but she's amazing at jiu-jitsu you know we saw that and we're like we gotta create an opportunity for her to come like you know and evolve and like live off jiu-jitsu live off the jiu-jitsu dream you know and sure enough we made it happen we got her an athlete visa you know and we got her competing in everything possible she's like leveled up like crazy since she's got here she's got all the support from me from eager from charlie you know and everybody else at btt of course i miss brazil a lot especially my my family my mom my sister and my friends but i feel that i have more opportunities in here especially for jiu-jitsu and it's a feel i feel amazing living here she had a phenomenal year. She placed in pretty much every tournament. If she didn't win her division, she won the absolute. If she didn't win the absolute, she won her division or she was in the top two. Gi, no gi, submission only, like points, all, all the rule sets she's able to do. Uh, and then it's an amazing year. And then for this last tournament, you know, there's a lot of pressure on her for to go in and, and win. The first match, she ended up losing to this girl that she should have beaten. She got intimidated. Unfortunately for her bracket, there wasn't very many people, so she ended up placing, which means she can go to the absolute division. And then in the absolute division, unlucky for her, or lucky for her, in my opinion, she ended up getting the same exact girl. And she was like, oh my God, I just lost to this girl. I gotta go to this girl again. And she was almost like in panic mode. And I was like, no. This is your chance. You, you lost to her now. Now is your chance to come out and get your revenge. And it's going to feel so much sweeter. I don't want you to quit. I want you to give everything you got. Can't speak it more. Say it loud. Bobby, Bobby. I saw the other girl in the back and she was just like crying in disbelief like I just beat that girl and then she came back and, and beat me like really really well beat me like really close tough match but it was a dominant win for Maria. And the final one was against this other girl who's been running through everybody. I think she won everything this year. And it was actually her second time going against Maria, you know, and uh Para não, campeão! Para não! Para não, campeão! 
Cabeça no chão, campeão! Cabe... Yeah, she just ended up beating Maria and took the gold, but regardless, you know, Maria had an awesome two years as a brown belt, and it's other than a couple girls that beat her, you know, most of the girls that she was competing against already black belts. I was like, this is it, man. Like, she, that's kind of like, she places on podium today, I have to give her her black belt. That's a huge overcoming right there. truth you know like when I came up with the title the, the Jiu Jitsu dream and the whole idea behind these episodes is what I wanted to show you know I wanted to show you guys I wanted to show the world what our lifestyle is all about you know it's not just you know going to tournaments and getting gold medals that's a small small tiny fraction of it. Jiu Jitsu teaches you a lot about um, a lot about yourself a lot about the things you really want in life, um, what kind of person you are. The ups and downs, the, the highs and the lows that we experience, experience together, you know, the growth that we've been able to do together. Don't give up, just keep going, because I have a lot of struggles, as everybody else in the world, whatever, whatever you're doing, but looking at me in the past, looking at me right now, I would say, like, just keep going. And uh, this, you know, this is what we do. We, we, we live jiu-jitsu, we travel the world, and we work in jiu-jitsu field. That's really what the jiu-jitsu lifestyle is, is being able to live a healthy lifestyle, live off our art that we're able to share with everybody else and keep, uh, keep building our team. I think jiu-jitsu really, really uh, breaks us down to the core, uh, helps people open up and find out who they truly are. This is it. This is the jiu-jitsu dream.